Welcome to Discovering. Tonight we'll be tagging along with Patrick, one of the best rabbit hunters in the business, and he lives right here in the UP. Patrick is a grand champion beagle. The association gives out a prize for the high hound, they call it, the most outstanding hound with the most points. So he'll get a trophy for the high hound award? That, that's quite an honor. Then we'll get the scoop on an international fly fishing film tour that's making a stop in Marquette. You have a conglomeration of uh, amateur and professional fly fishermen from all over the world that film their trips. Sit back and put your feet up. That's all tonight, right here on Discovery. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Beagles are scent hounds. Alongside the bloodhound and the basset hound, the beagle has one of the best developed senses of smell of any dog. Their forte is ground scenting much more than air scenting, and they've been developed primarily for hunting deer, rabbits, and other small game. Their excellent hunting ability combined with a happy personality has made the beagle one of the most popular dogs in the country. Well, this is uh, two tamaracks. Good news, Patrick. He's our field champion, our pride and joy, a lot of a lot of family work and effort went into this. Uh, he's almost four years old and uh, he wants to go hunting today. One of the dogs with the little spot on her head, she came from Texas. This is her first UP winter and she's, she's doing just splendidly. Sunday, the dog with the most white, she's uh, our old girl too. She's got a really good nose and she's been great for helping keep our pack going. Turning them loose, casting your dogs, it's called casting your dogs, and they're, they're excited. They've been in the pen for a little while, so after they're done doing their business, they're going to search, and that's, that's their happiness. They're going to uh, hunt and hunt and uh, cover as much of the swamp as they can and bring out a rabbit. That's what they want to do. Sometimes uh, hunters will have uh, their own little call. They'll tell them, yep, 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 get a bunny out in there. They all, Everybody has their own way of casting their dogs, and that's our call. And sometimes they tell them, work, work, work. They know work is finding a rabbit and bringing it out to the hunter. Or Each beagle has their own voice when they find a rabbit. It's called giving tongue. He's got it. They're all unique. Uh, even if there's a pack of uh, seven or eight dogs or more, you can pick out your own dog's voice. Sometimes they have a high-pitched squeal when they're hunting and pushing the rabbit, actually smelling the rabbit. Uh, sometimes they have a deeper kind of a bay. Uh, Patrick has a nice, loud, clear, good, choppy voice. And uh, that's important when you're hunting because you got to know your dog's voice and, uh, and, and get them, get to where they are, where they're bringing you the rabbit. And uh, it, it's really interesting, even with 20, a pack of 20 dogs, how so many of the dogs have their own unique voice, their own tongue. A lot of beaglers are almost full-time beaglers. Um, they sometimes even hire handlers to uh, run their dogs and take them different places. We're just part-time beaglers. Uh, we have our day jobs too. So uh, we, uh, we only keep four dogs. A lot of beaglers that uh, you know live out in the country, they, they may have uh, a dozen or more to choose from. And to have a field champion and Patrick be the high hound uh, from a small kennel like ours, it, it's really a, um, it's really an awesome thing, and uh, 
and uh, we're just thrilled about it. Well, we're standing here waiting for the beagles to get a start. And sometimes you spend time doing that, waiting. Beagling's a lot about waiting. My uncle used to say some days the beagles would go out in the woods and they'd get a rabbit going right away and they would run that rabbit, run that rabbit right by. You could almost feel the rabbit's whiskers tickle your knees as they went by. And that happens. And then some days you stand here and you wait and you wait. And if the beagles get a rabbit going, it might last. They might chase it for 15 minutes and then that's it. That's kind of what beagling's about. It's a waiting game sometimes. Patrick is our field champion. He's almost four years old. He was born in our basement and his mom is our house dog. Uh, she had difficulties with the birth and uh, there were two puppies that survived. When Patrick was born, uh, we thought he was a goner. He came out for each. Pretty soon he started wiggling and pretty soon he started moving and uh, there was a spark there and Patrick pulled through. Then the training begins when they're about five, six months old. They're taking them out in the woods. Lots of training in between. Teaching them how to walk on a leash, uh, teaching them how to know your voice, teaching them how to come when they're, uh, to know their names. Um, Patrick's been through a lot of ups and downs, uh, I think more so than any of our beagles. Um, when he was three years old, he was diagnosed with Lyme's disease. He uh, pulled through that and uh, hardly missed a beat. He's, uh, he's been really consistent in the field trials. Patrick had five Northern Michigan Hair Association uh, uh, wins. One here at Beatty Knock, class winner, and one at Timberline, Wisconsin, and one at Ishpermain, the Eastern UP. So that, the, he's a field champion, that, that is a sport uh, uh, run by the American Kennel Club, the AKC. They have their standards that a field champion has to have three first place and 120 points. points in a licensed field trial. Patrick's been from one end of the UP to another to down and downstate as far Kalkaska. as Kalkaska. Um, he was very consistent picking up ribbons in, in most of those trials and he's got his three wins. Uh, he, this year, uh, the association gives out a prize for the high hound, they call it, for the whole uh, northern Wisconsin, upper Michigan, and downstate as far as Traverse oh, the City. Northern Michigan Hair It's called the Northern Michigan Hair association. association. The most outstanding hound with the most it's points. points so. so he'll get a trophy for the high hound award. Trials, they got a 13-inch class for males and females, and they got a 15-inch class for the males and females. I think beagles are the only breed that come in two different size categories. That makes it fun for the competitions. And uh, beaglers are always trying to keep their dogs at a certain size. And we have 13 inch beagles, the smaller ones. Besides being an excellent field trial and hunting dog, Patrick is a really uh, a great handling dog. He's, he's with my family, with the children. He's, he's smart and he'll hunt all day for you. He's uh, uh, th this kind of dog that you're proud to have because he's, he's a people dog and, and he's a hunting dog. <laughs> we we'll always try to get him to start it as early as possible, like Four months old, that's usually when, if you can get a dog started at four months old, that's doing real good, considering what I, from what I heard from other beaglers and all that, and that's, Patrick started at four months old. Beagling, to have a good beagle, you have to have a lot of foot, that means speed, and you have to have a lot of nose, and that's what Patrick really outshines. They, and they have to have brains. They have to, you know, have, uh, know how to handle a rabbit and, and enjoy being out there. Most beaglers, that's bred right into them. If you're going to get into the sport of beagling uh, or, or hunting with a beagle, make sure you talk to somebody that has uh, dogs that do that sort of thing. Um, so you have those three things and, and you just have to kind of work with that. Each dog is different. The most important thing is you got to get the dog out there. From the time they're four or five months old, you got to be out there whether the mosquitoes are biting or whether there's mud up to your knees or, or more or whether it's 10 below zero, the dog has got to be exposed to all kinds of conditions and the dog's got to love it and most beagles just love it. A lot of it comes naturally. Some dogs uh, you can train if you have an older, experienced beagle that hunts real well. 
uh, and we'll work with the young pup because the pup will learn from the older dog and you can pair them up that way. But then there's times you got to run a, a good field trial, a good hunting dog alone so they can um, know how to get out there and to, uh, get a rabbit going, you know, when the day is uh, not good scenting and to keep that rabbit going so they'll bring that rabbit so the judge can score the points, or if you're a hunter, you can shoot that rabbit and then have some rabbit stew for supper. God willing, we'll breed baby with Patrick in the spring. Hoping and praying that they have a litter. Uh, they should have nice puppies. It'll really shake up the gene pool a little bit. Uh, like I said, baby is uh, from Texas and she's got a lot of different kind of a dog behind her, some with a, a lot of nose. And um, I'm hoping that we get a litter of pups out of the two of them. Uh, that should really be an experience and we're hoping that that, that happens. <laughs>
gave my brother a beagle back in 1973. My brother uh, took care of it and cleaned up after it for about two weeks, and then he was tired of her, and she was mine, and I've had a beagle ever since then. So Alan Hendrickson, my uncle, got me started in this sport. He was an awesome beagler. Uh, lots of good memories. He's the one that told me the most important part of a beagle is its tail, not its nose, because if you see, see that happy tail, you're not going to have a bad day when you see that tail wagging. So that was something he taught me. Uh, other people we like to thank, of course, is my family. This is definitely a family sport with us. The kids walking, cleaning up after, feeding beagles. You know, it's endless. Um, John Quigley was a beagler that sold us Gert, Patrick's um, mother, got us kind of back into beagling. Uh, and Dave Ramsden, uh, who uh, let us keep Patrick, even though he was, we owed him a puppy, but he said, keep Patrick. And it's been a joy. It's been a, a joy for the whole family. And uh, I can't thank them guys enough, and especially my family. It's been good medicine. Beagling's good medicine. Yeah, we have a uh, fortunate enough to be able to bring in the Fly Fishing Film Tour 2015, which is a pretty, really neat event, actually. You have a conglomeration of uh, amateur and professional fly fishermen from all over the world that film their trips, and then they enter into a competition, and then the uh, organization, the Fly Fishing Film Tour, puts them all together on an annual basis, and then they, they tour a film around the country. So we were able to build enough interest locally in the UP with the fly fishermen community specifically, but also the other angling communities that we have to be able to bring the film to Marquette. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the TSX Theater, which is a 35 foot tall, 70 foot wide screen and show this film to the local fly fishing community. So at this point, we're, we're telling everybody about it. We have all kinds of free fly fishing gear to give away, all kinds of informational stuff. There's gonna be professional fly fishing guides from the UP, such as Brad Petsky will be on hand. Uh, a lot of his clientele, he's giving information out to come to the event. So we're really trying to just PR this thing right now, but we wanna bring some local you know, fly fishing knowledge, local fly fishing awareness to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We have, uh, we have the fortunate circumstance of being located in some of the nicest freshwater facilities in the world with the Great Lakes and the tributaries of the Great Lakes. We have fantastic trout fishing at certain times of the year, so we thought this would be a great chance to bring uh, all types of angling communities together, specifically the fly fishing community, to, uh, to highlight what's going on elsewhere around the world as in, as in other areas of the United States. So I found out about the Fly Fishing Film Tour when I went to an event in De Pere, Wisconsin, and uh, it's a really neat event to bring local fly fishermen together. And specifically, the the, the portion of the film that I remember was a guy by the name of, of uh, Conway Bowman fishing in the Pacific Ocean with a 17-foot Lund boat nine miles off the coast of California, and he was fly fishing for great white sharks and other sharks and uh, a film cameraman guy actually fell in the water while he was fishing and uh, he actually made sure that he had the fish or the shark on the end of the line before he tried to save the cameraman from back in the water. So that was kind of my introduction to the fly fishing film tour. And I thought, you know, this would be great to bring up to our new facility up in Marquette. There's a bunch of fly fishing going on up here in the UP. So this would be a really, really good thing to get everybody out of the house in, the, in February when we're full on winter here and get out and see some fly fishing, you know, that's being brought in from all over the world. It's a really, really neat event if you like to fly fish or, or cinematography from around the world. Some of the things you can expect to see in this video is uh, specifically, you know, steelhead fishing from British Columbia or fly fishing the flats down in Florida or the Bahamas for tarpon and bonefish. Um, maybe the Seychelles uh, way off in the, you know, the eastern part of the world where they're catching all kinds of in interesting species of fish like blue razzies and, and giant trevallis. Um, what's neat about the fly fishing film tour is you're not just going to see things from the United States, you're going to see things in Australia, uh, Mongolia for taming, you're going to see Canada, you are going to see things um, from Africa and all other parts of the world and people uh, catching 
types of, of fish on the fly, which is a totally different concept than a lot of what we were brought up here up in the Upper Peninsula. What makes this event special is you don't have to be a fly fisherman to enjoy this. The cinematography, the scenery, the adventures that these groups of people go on to catch fish with the fly are very impressive. It's women, it's men, it's uh, young people, it's older people. This is really a neat uh, video that's, that's made into a movie that really illustrates some of the most beautiful places in the world. I remember that's how I got into fly fishing was um, a bad day on the water consisted of a, a five to ten mile float down the Colorado River. Well even if you're not catching fish you're in some of the most beautiful scenery uh, in the country and when these groups of individuals take you around the world to see what they can catch with a fly rod and a fly it's very entertaining and very impressive so it, it appeals to all types of fishing uh, sportsmen and women and people that just enjoy scenery and cinematography. Another fantastic way to get children involved, uh, bring them to a big on-screen event like this to see what type of fun um, they can have with the fly rod. I have a nine and a half month old son. I can't wait to uh, take my fly rod and, a, and, and some ant patterns or some mosquito patterns and, and dip them off the end of our dock and watch them catch fish with the fly rod for the first time. So it's a great event. Uh, for kids, great event for families, everything's family friendly, um, no swearing, no alcohol, totally PG event, lots of entertainment, you should come on down and check it out. So the uh, Fly Fishing Film Tour is going to be shown at the Thomas Theater uh, Marquette Cinema which is on 1525 Commerce Drive in Marquette, Michigan. The event is going to be on Saturday, February 7th at 7 p.m. Uh, Tickets are available online. You can come to our website. You can purchase them at the theater the day of or anytime uh, before. Tickets will be $15 uh, before and day of. If you want to pay $3 more, you can sit in one of our plush VIP seats, which I know we've sold about six already as of, as of today's date. But uh, yeah, come on down, check it out. Check out your local fly fish community. Come down and have a good time. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, you can join us on Facebook or go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Mm -hmm.